you, Mr. Chairman, for holding what is an extraordinarily important and timely hearing um, on countering Russia and the Ukraine. And I appreciate our witnesses being here. Uh, let me join you in very heartfelt condolences to uh, someone who was a courageous opposition leader. And sometimes true patriots pay a price. Uh, Boris Nemtsov uh, led uh, efforts in which he passionately believed in, in a different Russia. And uh, I find it pretty outrageous to see the latest narrative that is being portrayed that an Islamist plot is the reason why he was assassinated. Uh, but to his family, his friends, and his followers, uh, uh, we have our, our heartfelt thoughts and condolences. Now, as it relates to today's hearings, there are many experts who would contend that the complexity of the geopolitics that led to the U.S. retreat from Europe created an opening for Putin in the Ukraine. Clearly, we must closely coordinate with our European friends for the sanctions against Russia to work. But I think, without any doubt, we can all agree on one point, and that is that the United States must take the lead. I believe the administration should fully implement measures in the Ukraine Freedom Support Act, which the President signed into law on December 18th. The legislation passed with unanimous consent in both houses of Congress. It authorizes the President to provide much needed military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine, and it imposes additional sanctions against Russia. This legislation was necessary in December, and it is certainly necessary today. Now, we all want a diplomatic solution, but I believe this can only come about when Putin believes that the cost of continuing to ravage Ukraine is simply too high. Providing non-lethal equipment like night vision goggles is all well and good, but giving Ukrainians the ability to see Russians coming, but not the weapons to stop them, is not the answer. The night vision goggles are one thing, but providing anti-tank and Armor weapons, tactical troop-operated surveillance drones, secure command and communications equipment would be far better. And frankly, I'm disappointed that the administration required to report to Congress on its plan for increasing military assistance to Ukraine on February the 15th has yet to send us that report. I was glad to join with Senator Corker in sending a letter to the President yesterday on the importance of providing defensive weapons and that we need to see this overdue report. In my view, it's time to impose additional targeted sanctions on the Russian energy sector to add to existing sanctions that are already costing the Russian economy about $140 billion per year, or about 7% of its economy. The administration should tighten restrictions on the development of shale deposits, Arctic drilling, and offshore drilling. I think the last thing we want to do is use American technology to create a Russian shale revolution that could only extend its reach into Europe and beyond. The Ukraine Freedom Support Act called for the administration to impose sanctions on other defense industry targets as well as on special Russian crude oil projects by January 31st. And I am still waiting for the administration's response. At the end of the day, the most effective sanction is an economically viable and stable Ukraine. The U.S. may provide an additional $1 billion in loan guarantees towards the end of this year on top of the $2 billion in guarantees already provided. In my view, this is a worthy investment, and it needs to be matched by continued reforms by the Ukrainians. Finally, I think we need to reinforce the transatlantic agenda. We must take a more strategic approach in facing this resurgent Russia. First, we need to reinvigorate the institutions that have for so long contributed to the transatlantic relationship and peace and stability. We need to sharpen our arsenal of response options, and that means NATO and EU integration, and adapting them to today's realities. In my view, the attention on Europe's east in confronting the threat from Russia has been necessary. We also need to focus on the south, also vulnerable to undue Russian influence. We need to strengthen security and economic relationships in the Balkans, especially in Serbia, Montenegro, Bulgaria, and Bosnia. Second, our intelligence community also needs to reprioritize the Russian threat, not only by addressing the immediate security threat in Ukraine, but across the board in Europe. And third is communications. I understand the administration is working with the Broadcasting Board of Governors to commit a little over $23 million to Russian language programming. 
which is a 49% increase over FY14. I think that and other diplom public diplomacy funds are incredibly important to counter Russian propaganda, which when I traveled through the region last year and have listened to those who have visited us from the region have said they are overwhelmed by Russian propaganda. There's one key point, and at the end of the day, that is that strong American leadership is what will matter.